Bonjour, bienvenue à notre rendez-vous quotidien pour la presse en ligne et en direct sur EBS. Nous sommes aujourd'hui le mardi 26 janvier. Je commence avec l'agenda du collège de cette semaine qui a lieu demain matin. Il est très simple. Le collège discutera demain d'un livre vert sur le vieillissement, promouvoir la solidarité et la, resp et la responsabilité entre générations. Et maintenant, je passe la parole à Balash pour une annonce sur notre budget d'aide au développement. Bonjour. Alors, la Commission européenne a aujourd'hui adopté son budget humanitaire annuel initial de 1,4 milliard d'euros pour 2021. Cela représente une augmentation de plus de 60 par rapport à l'année dernière. 505 millions seront alloués à l'Afrique pour soutenir les personnes touchées par des crises de longue durée, celles qui souffrent de crises alimentaires et nutritionnelles et celles déplacées par des conflits armés. 385 millions d'euros seront alloués aux besoins au Moyen-Orient et en Turquie pour aider les personnes touchées par la crise syrienne et par la situation extrêmement grave au Yémen. 180 millions d'euros aidera les populations les plus vulnérables en Asie et en Amérique latine. L'Union européenne va aussi allouer, euh, va aussi allouer euh, 28 millions d'euros pour financer des projets en Ukraine, dans les Balkans occidentaux et dans le Caucase. Vous trouverez plus d'informations dans notre communiqué de presse. Merci beaucoup, Balash. Um, let me remind you that Executive Vice President Valdis Dombrovskis and Commissioner Janusz Wojciechowski will come down to the press room after this uh, midday briefing for a press conference on trade and agriculture. And with that, we have finished our announcements and I pass the floor to um, Thomas. Thomas, you have the floor. Est-ce que tu m'entends Je t'entends, Thomas. Est-ce que tu m'entends Ok, très bien. Euh, moi, je ne t'entends pas, mais je vais récupérer la chose. Je voulais, je voulais te poser une question sur la, la le, le, le speech de la présidente à Davos. Si tu peux donner plus de détails sur ce programme euh, de, de, de biodéfense, c'est pour quand, sur quelle forme, quel budget Et surtout, euh, comment évaluez-vous les partenariats publics privés à l'heure actuelle, vu les expériences plutôt mauvaises avec les compagnies pharmaceutiques et euh, qui ne respectent pas les, les délais de livraison, euh, qui demandent la confidentialité sur les contrats, euh, on ne sait même pas si on peut porter plainte ou pas. Euh, voilà. Est-ce que c'est le bon moment de proposer des partenariats publics privés Merci. Merci beaucoup. Je, je crains que malheureusement, je ne vais pas pouvoir rentrer dans les détails euh, des, euh, des annonces de la présidente. Ce sont, euh, ce sont des annonces et donc, bien entendu, la commission reviendra le moment venu avec, euh, avec les informations euh, là-dessus. En ce qui concerne euh, ta question, euh, en ce qui concerne la coopération avec l'industrie, euh, j'ai déjà eu l'occasion de dire à de nombreuses reprises euh, ici en salle de presse que dans la situation dans laquelle nous nous trouvons et face au genre de défis auxquels nous nous trouvons, il est évident que les autorités publiques, y compris au niveau européen, donc la Commission européenne, et les industriels et les scientifiques doivent travailler, travailler ensemble, car il serait illusoire de croire qu'un seul de ces acteurs travaillant seul dans son coin euh, puisse avoir euh, les moyens nécessaires pour, euh, pour mener à bien euh, les, ou pour mettre en œuvre les solutions nécessaires pour faire face à ce genre, euh, à ce genre de défis. Ce sont des questions qui sont euh, complexes, euh, qui sont euh, protéiformes et qui demandent que chacun puisse venir avec l'expertise euh, dont il dispose et les compétences dont il dispose pour en venir, euh, en venir à bout. Et donc, euh, c'est comme cela qu'il faut, euh, qu faut comprendre le message de la présidente euh, de, ce, de ce matin. Y a-t-il d'autres questions pour nous aujourd'hui sur euh, les, le discours de la présidente à Davos 
Merci de garder votre main levée uniquement si c'est sur ce sujet. Et je vois une question de euh, Bruno, Bruno Waterfield. Oh, sorry, Marquetta. Uh, do you hear me? Yes, I do hear you. Yeah. Hi. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for the question. I'm from Denigan, from the Czech Republic, from Prague. I have a question concerning uh, concerning the number of the vials in uh, Pfizer BioNTech vaccines, uh, because after the ruling of the EMA, uh, there's possibility or the the six vials can can be extracted from one vial. So, as I understand it correctly now, that the company Pfizer BioNTech uh, that they are delivering now the doses to each. Uh, countries according to those six number uh, six, six six doses so um, is it is it uh, like now uh, what is going to happen in the future that always there will be the number of deliveries uh, uh, according to the six doses in one while thank you that's not really a question on the double speech uh, that the president has just given but I understand that the interest of course is focused on um, on the health-related questions, so I will pass the floor uh, on this to Stefan. Um, thank you very much. Yes, indeed, uh, EMA has uh, issued uh, some time ago a recommendation regarding the issue of extracting sixth dose from uh, these vials. Our understanding is that thanks to the extraction of a sixth dose, the, the first thing I would have to stress, though, is that our agreements have been uh, concluded in the context of numbers of doses. This is what has to be delivered, and this is also what is expected from the company. Uh, our understanding is that thanks to the delivery of, thanks to the possibility to extract a sixth dose, um, the, um, the, the, the deliveries can take place more quickly, so an acceleration of delivery. So I think that is, uh, that is good. This being said, it is important, as you know, that you have the appropriate material to do this, uh, syringes and needles that allow to extract um, a sixth dose. For this, the Commission has launched a joint procurement and has concluded framework contracts which allow member states, now already, to purchase such uh, materials. Thank you. Thank you. Are there other questions uh, for us today on vaccines? Um, Jakob. Will this enter into force? And uh, does Jacob, this need we, to be? Uh, Jacob, we, we missed, yeah. the, Jacob, beginning we missed the beginning of your question. Hi, again. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Okay. My question is on the uh, export authorization scheme for vaccine. When this will enter into force, and whether the safeguard committee has to vote on it, and when this would be. Thank, Thank you. you. I will pass the floor to Stefan on this. Thank you very much. You, ah, you see me. You hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Excellent. Uh, yeah, thank you ahead. very much. Indeed, um, this um, uh, export uh, registration mechanism has been announced by Commissioner Kiriakidis yesterday. Uh, the idea is to set up um, a system that allows to ensure transparency about the uh, vaccines that have been produced in the European Union and that would be exported. So in the interest of uh, transparency, also taking into account the fact that the European Union has invested quite important sums in the development of production capacity in the European Union. And then in order to ensure the transparency of this, uh, of uh, what is happening with the vaccines produced here, this mechanism has been uh, proposed. The Commission is now working uh, towards uh, the development of this mechanism, and we hope to have more information by the end uh, of the week on this. Thank you. Thank you, Jakob. Do you have a follow-up? Exactly, is the Commission working on? I don't understand because uh, if if I understand this correctly, it would be the same mechanism that was also imposed on masks last year. So just an implementing regulation, um, where basically I think last time around it took one day to adopt this um, by a vote in the committee. So um, maybe if you can explain a bit more the process and what the Commission is uh, proposing exactly and whether this differs from uh, the scheme that was imposed on masks last year. Stefan. 
Uh, thank you very much. Well, the practical details of the system still have to be worked out. That's the first thing I want to say. I want to reiterate what I said before, that the, the, the purpose of this mechanism will be to ensure transparency regarding production of vaccines in the European Union. But again, the, the operational aspects, the operational arrangements to set this up have to be worked out, how it will be organized, which form it will take, and so on. This uh, is what the Commission is working on. And as I said, uh, on the basis of this work, we will, um, uh, we're working towards a proposal for this instrument by the end of this week. But again, the practical arrangements have to be uh, worked on. Thank you. So, Jacob, watch this space. We'll keep, be coming back with further details um, later on. Um, let's continue on the issue of vaccines. Stefan. Et ensuite, j'ai une question euh, concrète. Tu m'entends Oui, il faut toujours oui. un petit peu de temps entre le moment où vous appuyez sur le bouton et le fait de commencer votre question. Est-ce que Stéphane, tu peux nous dire que c'est une question de jour ou de, de semaine plutôt J'imagine que les États membres doivent donner leur accord. Et deuxièmement, euh, on se rappelle euh, avec les masques, l'année passée, il y avait problème de fourniture pour les pays tiers, je pense concrètement aussi à la Suisse qui est au, au centre de l'Europe, qui était coupée à un certain moment de certaines fournitures. Euh, comment vous allez voir que ce problème, par exemple pour la Suisse, ne euh, se pose pas et que la Suisse ne sera pas coupée de, de, des vaccins qui sont partis aussi produits en Suisse d'ailleurs Merci. Stéphane. Well, um, I think I can only confirm what I said before. We are working on our proposal and hope to have this proposal towards the end of the week. That's the idea. So that's the deadline, that's the timing on the basis of which we are working. What I would like to add, and, and I think it's a reiteration of what I said before, it is meant to be a transparency instrument, a notification instrument. Uh, companies that want to export um, uh, vaccines are invited or will be requested rather to inform, to notify the authorities of this intention to export these products. This is based on the idea that the European Commission has spent quite a lot of funds in the development of these production capacities to make sure that there's sufficient doses available for the European uh, uh, Union and beyond. And it's in order to uh, assess this commitment, contractual arrangements, that this monitoring system has been uh, set up. And I think I'll have to leave it uh, at that for the time being. Thank you. Mathis. Yeah, I do have a follow-up question on this, because um, the way it was presented yesterday, this instrument, I thought it was a requirement on companies more than a request. And I, so I was waiting, uh, wondering what would, would be the legal basis for a requirement like this, which hasn't been part of the original contract. And what, what would be um, uh, the situation if the Commission uh, doesn't like the export plans uh, that um, uh, will be given a notice of? What can the Commission do in that case? Stefan. Um. I'm sorry, but I, I think there's really not a lot I can add. Uh, I, what, what I've explained, I've explained the principle, the objective, why we are doing this, put in the context of our vaccination, vaccination strategy and the establishment of this diverse portfolio and the deployment of these vaccines. We, uh, the Commissioner has announced uh, this um, mechanism yesterday to achieve or to work towards the priorities and objectives that I have just explained. But um, forgive me that if I do, I'm not yet in a position to explain all the practical arrangements and the practical operational setup of this system. This is something we are working on. And as I said, by the end of the week, uh, we, uh, we should have this um, ready and we'll be in a position to say more, I think. Let me just emphasize the word uh, that is important here is transparency. <clears throat> this is not about uh, blocking, this is about knowing what uh, the companies um, are exporting or will export to markets outside of the European uh, Union. <coughs> Apologies. It's not based on, um, it's not related to the contracts per se, this is something which the European Union can, of course, implement, and as was mentioned before, we have already done this in other, uh, in other contexts, and it allows public authorities and the public to know what uh, exports are taking place um, from companies producing within the, within the European Union. And we will come back with the exact implementation details 
um, at a later stage. <coughs> Apologies. Raf. Yes, hi. Uh, good morning. I have the two simple questions uh, uh, also on this. Uh, just, just to get back uh, on, uh, on Pfizer, I just want to have an update. Uh, how are we doing? We were supposed to come back to 100% uh, this week uh, to, and then start with uh, more to uh, compensate for the previous losses uh, later. Uh, Stefan, do we have 100%? Uh, do we have indications that we will have 100% this week? And then I have a second question on the pandemic itself. Uh, Portugal is in a very bad state as it is, and uh, there is talk that they will, cons uh, that they will ask uh, for help to the European Union. Uh, one question is, has uh, Portugal already asked uh, for help? And, uh, and then uh, a theoretical question, if they ask for help, how will this be, uh, through what institutional ways will that be processed? Uh, thank you. Sorry, Ralph, help on what? to deal with the overflow of hospitals uh, uh, in that sense uh, and with the specific uh, pandemic uh, issues that are at hand these days. Okay, Stefan, on the first question. <clears throat> Thank you very much. As far as Pfizer is concerned, indeed, the company had announced, as you know, that last week there would be problems with the deliveries or the deliveries of the vaccines, and that in this week it would take up and go again to the 100% of the deliveries. We are following this. We're keeping an eye on this. The week is not yet over yet, of course. So uh, the 100% is expected to be delivered by the end of this week. Um, together, this week and uh, last week, for this week and last week, this would mean that. Uh, quite a lot of what was supposed to be delivered will be delivered. And so we continue to monitor this um, 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 and to check that indeed the engagement, the commitments the company has taken is uh, taking place. But we're still in the beginning of the week, of course. And on the second question, um, because I'm not aware of the details of the Portuguese request. Stefan, do we have um, indications Sorry. on your side? Sorry. Um, I have to say that I'm not aware of uh, any request in this regard. Uh, maybe also good to check with the, with the Portuguese uh, authorities. Of course, uh, if a request comes, we will look into it, that is for sure. But I don't think I can give uh, any further details at this moment. Thank you. Let me remind you, Raf, that uh, a lot has already been done by the European Union in order to um, assist member states in uh, facing uh, the different challenges, uh, urgencies, emergencies that stem from the, from the crisis, notably uh, by flexibilizing as much as possible the use of the, uh, of the European budget. Uh, this was the famous um, CRI, which allowed them to reallocate uh, funds, uh, notably from the, from the structural funds. We also have, of course, uh, the mechanisms under the civil protection mechanism, but we would need to know more um, on the specific request from the Portuguese authorities to, uh, to be able to answer more precisely. Of course, as Stefan has said, if a request comes, the Commission um, will, uh, will analyze it as swiftly as possible, taking into account its prerogatives and the means at its disposal. Um, we continue with vaccines. Lise. Yes, hello, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Okay, great. Uh, I have uh, three questions, if I may. Uh, the first two is regarding uh, AstraZeneca. Um, on the topic of this sudden decline in the doses from AstraZeneca, um, I wonder what, what is the exact information that, uh, that you are not getting from the company uh, in terms of uh, why, why, why do we have this decline? Uh, and the second question is... Um, do you have reason to suspect that AstraZeneca has sold vaccines to other countries outside of the EU that should have been reserved uh, for the EU? Um, if we can start with those questions, please. Stefan. 
Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Luis, for these questions. Um, listen, uh, we, we're not going to have a debate here about all the things that AstraZeneca has said or has not said with regards to issues they may have with deliveries or no deliveries, uh, issues that may that they may have or not have with regard to production capacities. What is important, I think, is what uh, the Commissioner has stressed <laughs> yesterday at the press statement, that it's important that we have timely deliveries of the doses of the vaccines that have been agreed upon with the company. This is important. We are facing a pandemic and the member states need these doses. So we are having, we had discussions yesterday with the company, as you know. We will now have discussions with the company again Wednesday um, to, to continue the discussions on these deliveries where we will insist, as I said, on timely delivery of the doses in the interest of the European citizens. Um, do we have reasons to suspect that, other, that deliveries have been made to, uh, to other countries? Well, um, I think um, the Commissioner has yesterday clearly explained uh, that um, there was a dissatisfaction with um, the, the deliveries, as was announced by the company. And the Commissioner has also, uh, and we've already had the opportunity to talk about this, announced the use of a mechanism that allows to introduce more transparency into the system, uh, transparency regarding doses that have been produced here in the European Union, in plants, in factories, um, uh, with, with the support of the European Union and the European Union budget. So it's important that um, uh, to build our contractual relationship of trust, we have the transparency about element about the vaccines that have been uh, produced and delivered here in the European Union and how they have been delivered to other places in the European Union or in the world. Uh, thank you. The, the president made this uh, abundantly clear in her uh, speech uh, in Davos uh, for the Davos Forum um, this uh, this morning. Uh, she uh, she reminded everyone that Europe has invested billions um, to help develop the first COVID-19 uh, vaccines, the world's first COVID-19 uh, vaccines. Um, we are um, playing our part uh, to create a truly um, common good. And so now, uh, the companies that we have um, supported, that we have invested in, uh, must um, deliver. They must um, honor their obligations. That's why uh, we are setting up a um, vaccine uh, export transparency mechanism to make sure that um, we know where the vaccines produced in Europe are going. Uh, of course, we uh, are determined to contribute globally to resolving this pandemic, but we also mean business when it comes uh, to Europe. And as you have seen, uh, we have now um, very, very uh, regular uh, steering board meetings where we uh, invite the companies to come and to, uh, and to explain and to work with us on ways to ensure that we get the doses that are required in Europe as quickly as possible and commensurate to the significant financial effort that we have made in order for this to happen. Verena. Ah, sorry, you had a third, you had a third question, I think. Lisa. On this, I guess, Lisa, or on the health-related yes, issue. Yes, yes, thank you for, for getting back. I just wanted some clarification on the AstraZeneca first, uh, but I will continue to my third question. Um, because today it, uh, it emerged that Sweden's health agencies uh, had uh, paused the vaccine payments to Pfizer uh, because they want some clarification on the amount of doses that is uh, that can be, uh, you know, uh, extracted from from the vials. Uh, so I wonder how how is this going to um, to influence the payment uh, of of the doses? Um, because obviously some countries are not able to extract mm. uh, six doses. Um, you mentioned before that that you are looking into procurement of. Um, of um, equipment to to be able to do so, but at the moment, that what is the issue around uh, around this payment? Because, as I understand it, this this extra payment will 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 hit some countries harder. Um, so, how are you going to um, to what, what are you going to say to the EU countries? How are we going to to handle uh, this uh, this situation? Thank you. Sorry, Lise, I'm not quite sure I understand your question. Um, are you saying that Sweden has announced that it is suspending payments on the basis of the order forms that it placed with the company to get doses? 
because in that case it's uh, it's Sweden uh, stopping a payment to the company. Uh, it does not concern uh, other EU countries, or there's something that I don't understand. Apologies. Lisa, press speak. Haven't said that in a while. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Yeah, good, okay. Uh, no, well, it, it has come out today huh, that, that Sweden's health agency has paused the vaccine payments to Pfizer because they yes. want clarification on, on the amount of doses uh, in, that, is, you know, that can be extracted in each vial. Um, and so I wonder, some countries can indeed extract six doses, but Pfizer now uh, wants, wants payment for six doses. Uh, so that will entail that some countries uh, will pay more for for the five doses that they are able to uh, to extract, um, and and so if if that's the case, uh, if a country only can extract five doses, well then it has received fewer doses for the same price. You, you understand what, I, what, I, what I'm saying? Yes, I understand. Um, so it's not linked to Sweden's payment. It's whether other member states who yes. you believe have difficulties. Or, or, or reporting difficulties in extracting the six doses. Yes, indeed, because okay, yes, I get it. Because okay. it will entail a, a, an extra an extra payment for the EU countries, um, and so in so, the end, uh, a larger bill. Eh? So, let me remind you that the uh, the indeed it is the member states who place the orders uh, with the. Uh, different pharmaceutical companies, uh, in this case Pfizer, on the basis of the overall agreement um, that we have. So then there is a contractual relationship between the member state and the company. And therefore, it is at that level that the uh, discussions must take place on the sort of issue that you are, um, that you are mentioning. But I, I go to Stefan in case he wants to add something. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Eric. I think you're totally right. Uh, I wanted to add what I said before, the, the fact that the agreements are all uh, concluded on the basis of doses. So on doses are is what uh, the company has to deliver. That's one thing. Uh, second, with regard to the extraction of a sixth dose, as, as I explained before, we have framework contracts with um, providers of syringes and needles, several hundreds of millions of them, that can be used for the extraction of a sixth dose. So these, frame, these framework contracts are out there. Member states can place their order at any time to have the necessary material. Um, and, and so the, the European Commission, I think, has uh, taken the necessary steps to make sure that such material is available and help member states with the extraction of a sixth dose. Thank you. Thank you. Move to Bruno. We could see you, Bruno, but you've disappeared again. I'm here. All right, go ahead. All right, go ahead. Um, I just wanted to um, ask um, a bit more of the detail in terms of the 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 um, export um, register, Jens Spahn this morning on ARD made it pretty clear that this is not just about transparency; it's about export um, a restriction. He said it would mean that vaccines that leave the EU need a permit. Um, can you just tell us more about the thinking? It certainly seems to go beyond transparency in the minds of the German health minister. And um, what's what's your view? Is it literally just going to be about a register transparency or could it leave uh, to restrictions in terms of AstraZeneca and the specifics? Um, some of the early doses used in the United Kingdom were made in the Netherlands uh, and Germany. Um, is the Commission saying that those shipments should not have taken uh, place given AstraZeneca's announcement uh, last uh, we can just more generally, um, how worried are you about the very, very low rate of vaccinations across the European um, Union at the moment? It's just under 2%, I, I think, 2% uh, 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 of uh, uh, people compared to 10.5% in the UK, for example, much, much higher um, Israel. How, how concerned are you about that? And presumably it's not actually because of shortages of vaccines at this stage. Thanks. Thank you. Stefan. 
Uh, thank you very much uh, for these questions, uh, Bruno. First, on the first question on uh, the fact whether we are going to block exports or whatever. Um, listen, um, the main point of entry here, and Eric has explained it quite well, is transparency. We have financed in, in we have um, financed large amounts in the production capacity of these companies. We expect a lot from the companies. We expect that these companies, as soon as they have the green light from EMA and the authorization of the commission, that they're in the capacity, that they have the possibility to produce tens, even hundreds of millions of doses quickly. This requires serious investments in production capacity, and this is an important risk, and the commission has taken part of this risk on itself to make sure that such capacity is there. So uh, this is a very important investment which has been made. Uh, this all, so it is very normal and it's very reasonable that uh, the Commission uh, can follow, can monitor um, um, the, what has been done with the doses, what is being done with the doses that have been produced using exactly these production capacities financed by the European Union. And that's the idea, to follow, to monitor the, um, the the vaccines that have been produced. That's the, on the first question, I think. The second question um, about AstraZeneca, uh, early doses in the UK, uh, sent to the UK, made from Netherlands and, and, and Germany. Um, again, we're not going to talk here uh, in, in, in the press room about um, what AstraZeneca um, uh, um, uh, should have done, should not have done. I think it's very clear the, the point that we have made with regard to the importance of timely deliveries. And, and the commissioner has also insisted on this um, creation of this uh, mechanism, this transparency tool, which will allow to much better monitor and follow what is uh, going on. This is important for the contract contractual relationship that we have with the vaccines developers and to build a relation of trust. Um, how worried are we about the state of vaccinations? Well, we are worried, that is for sure. This is a very, um, we are dealing with a very important pandemic. Vaccination is very important. This is one of the reasons why uh, last week the Commission came out with this uh, communication on establishing a united front against COVID. In this recommendation, um, as or in this communication, as you will see, there's a list of many measures and uh, recommendations from the Commission to the Member States so that together, we can handle uh, this uh, pandemic and get as quickly as we can out of this pandemic, among other things, by the vaccination. It's not just enough to have vaccines. The vaccination is, of course, the one step that is so important to get us out of the pandemic. So this is a very important issue, an, imp an issue that concerns all of us, Member States Commission, and we have to get out of this as quickly as possible. Thank you. Lawrence. Lawrence, you have the floor. Can you hear me? Can yes. you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Lawrence. Great, excellent. Sorry, having some kind of technical difficulty. Uh, thanks, Eric. And um, so a couple of questions. Look, um, can I know, I know you, you're not getting into the ins and outs of, of the discussion with AstraZeneca, but can you at least give us clarity on one point? Is this believed to be a one-off, the problem that they had that set off um, these delays, or is this a problem that could, be, uh, could repeat itself in the future, in particular um, the idea that they themselves are struggling to get hold of some uh, key ingredients, the, the API uh, for their vaccines. And secondly, can you just um, give us a very clear, straight answer to a, to a, to a clearish question, which is, is the legal protection, the legal rights that the, that the Commission has um, with AstraZeneca in terms of the security of supply similar to the legal rights we have with the CureVac contract? Thanks. Thank you. On your first point, I can only repeat what, um, what Stefan has, um, has said, and uh, that is um, that we, at this point in time, do not have the information from the company that we believe allows us to answer the question that you are, uh, you are asking. And indeed, we would very much like to have this information, which is why um, we uh, have invited AstraZeneca once again to a steering board meeting on Wednesday. So it's not uh, that we are uh, unwilling to provide an explanation, it is that we are trying ourselves 
to understand um, what is the issue. We see that uh, uh, doses are being uh, delivered elsewhere. Um, and we know that we have um, signed uh, an agreement with AstraZeneca in August, that member states place their orders, I believe, around October, um, uh, and that we are now at the end of January. And therefore, we believe that uh, the doses uh, should be basically um, available to be delivered um, if and when the conditional marketing authorization um, is uh, recommended by the European Medicines Agency. So this is a developing dialogue that we have with, uh, with AstraZeneca. On your second question, I'm afraid it's not that straightforward. Um, yes, the CureVac um, contract has been made um, uh, available in redacted form to, uh, to the European Parliament, but it is not the case for the other contracts, so we will not comment on this at this stage. James. Friendly, uh Daily Mail. I don't know if you can hear me. Go ahead, James. Thanks very much. Um, yeah, so two questions if I could, and I'm sorry, I'm going to come back on this mechanism because you did announce it last night. A transparency register, okay. Uh, but if you don't like what you see on that transparency register, uh, what in very practical and simple terms can the European Commission do, please? That, that is quite important. Uh, and then the president of South Africa uh, spoke in Davos this morning um, before uh, von der Leyen, and he accused rich countries of hoarding uh, vaccines. I'm just wondering, is vaccine nationalism OK uh, when it comes wrapped in an EU flag? Thank you. Thank you, James. On your first question, the point is that we want to know prior to exports where exports are going to um, are going to. Uh, to take place. That is what we have announced yesterday, and that is what we will uh, propose. And um, uh, this is what we can say on this um, at this uh, point in time. You cannot basically devise strategies if you don't know what's happening. So in a field which is absolutely crucial, uh, we are ensuring that we are going to know exactly what is uh, happening uh, from an industrial point of view. Um, as the president has said herself in Davos this morning, because we mean business and because it is important for us to ensure that um, things are rolled out as we have agreed with, uh, with the companies. That is the sense of the proposal. For, um, for details, as I have said, we will come back, um, we will come back uh, later. On the second issue in terms of vaccine nationalism, let me just point out once again that the European Commission um, was uh, one of the key promoters and indeed the biggest financial um, donor to the COVAX facility. So um, uh, if there is one continent which is playing its role as far as it can in terms of ensuring that companies, that sorry, countries um, around the globe, uh, including those that have lower incomes than the European Union, can receive doses, it is um, the European Union. Um, that, of course, does not mean that it is an easy undertaking because of all the manufacturing issues um, that exist, and we know this, which is why uh, the Commission is working on mechanisms which Anna has described to you here um, um, in terms of uh, mechanisms to help a share of vaccine doses uh, when, uh, when they are made available uh, to EU member states. Uh, but quite frankly, I would address that question perhaps to other parts um, of the world. And now we move to James Crisp. Um, thank you, Eric. I hope you can hear me. Could you please tell me which other parts of the world you would address that to? Um, also, if it's not vaccine nationalism, is it vaccine protectionism? And finally, I don't think I caught your answer to Lawrence's question about how similar the AstraZeneca agreement is to the CureVac deal. Thank you very much. Well, on the last one, I invite you to go and look at the, um, at the recording we just made of my previous answer. We're not going to be repeating answers here. We have 20 minutes left. On the first part, the key point is, as I said, that um, uh, Europe is uh, working and has been working since the beginning um, on uh, playing a major role 
in um, helping uh, countries with lower incomes than uh, European Union countries to get access to the vaccine. Um, to whom James wants to address his question is his own business. Oliver. Yes, hello, on AstraZeneca. Uh, is it correct to assume that you took the assurances of the company and of the other companies that they have proper sufficient production facilities at face value? So basically you signed the agreement with them and then you had no means of checking whether actually they're up and running. And then secondly, you said yourself about, uh, you said 20 minutes ago, about 20 minutes ago, you said uh, transparency is key. So when are you finally going to make the AstraZeneca agreement public so that we have clarity about what's in the contract? Thank you. Oliver, on your second question, you know very well that I said that transparency on exports is key so that we are in a position uh, uh, to know what is going on on the contracts. We have explained here time and time again uh, what our position is. Uh, so I'm not going to repeat it for the hundredth, uh, for the hundredth um, time. On your first um, question, let me remind you that um, the strategy which the Commission uh, is rolling out with the member states um, is a strategy that has taken off actually very quickly. Uh, we started negotiating um, contracts, uh, advanced purchasing agreements with these companies um, in the summer of last uh, year. Um, then the, these contracts were signed over many months. Uh, some of them are still quite uh, quite recently, sorry, these advanced purchasing agreements, and then member states uh, have started placing, uh, placing orders. And in the meantime, we have had the steering board, um, which has met regularly to see how things are, um, are going. So we are following things um, very, very closely, and uh, we are trying to make sure that we take uh, the necessary steps in order to ensure that the companies respect their obligations. But as I've said here before, this, is, this was never going to be um, an easy ride. This is a process that the world has never embarked on before, developing in such a short space of time, less than a year, a portfolio of vaccines, and then developing the production capacities um, in order to uh, deliver hundreds and hundreds of millions of doses. So, uh, of course, there are issues which are arising. And, of course, the Commission and the Member States together are in discussion with the Member States in order to try to, uh, to solve them. And the space of time uh, that has happened since we first uh, engaged with these companies is actually extremely short. Virginie. Oui. Bonjour, vous m'entendez Bonjour Virginie, nous t'entendons. Alors, j'ai deux questions. Je voudrais savoir, les, les, dans les contrats que vous avez signés, la partie qui concerne justement les investissements dans les, dans les usines, dans tout ce qui doit permettre d'accroître la production pour que des livraisons soient faites en Europe à un niveau élevé, est-ce que vous avez un moyen, de, dans les contrats en question, de surveiller que ces investissements sont bien faits pour la livraison des, des vaccins qui seront livrés en Europe, parce que ces, ces usines ne font pas forcément, ne produisent pas forcément des vaccins qui ne sont destinés qu'à l'Europe. Je dirais que les lignes de production sont séparées. Enfin bon, voilà. Première question. Deuxième question. Euh, vous nous dites on revoit AstraZeneca mercredi, mais il y a eu deux réunions hier qui n'ont servi à rien. Enfin, en tout cas, de ce que vous nous dites, qui n'ont pas permis d'éclaircir la situation. Que, pourquoi vous pensez qu'en 48 heures, euh, qu'est-ce qui va se passer qu Qu'est-ce qu que vous attendez de plus d'AstraZeneca Pourquoi hier, à deux reprises, AstraZeneca ne vous a pas apporté les réponses que vous attendiez Et pourquoi mercredi, elle pourrait le faire Il pourrait le faire. Je ne comprends pas bien, en fait. Merci. Merci pour tes questions. Sur la première question, je passe la parole à Stéphane. Merci beaucoup Virginie. Oui, en effet, nous avons investi des sommes importantes, comme tu le sais, dans le développement des capacités de production de ces sociétés. Euh, plus de 2,1 milliards, comme tu sais, du, du, du Emergency Support Instrument avec des injections financières des, des, autres, des États membres euh, euh, qui viennent au-dessus de ça. Euh, évidemment, nous, euh, ce genre de, 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 de décision d'investir dans la capacité de production sont basées sur des négociations longues et détaillées avec la société. Donc, nous connaissons la situation, nous connaissons la technologie des sociétés, nous connaissons les besoins des sociétés pour euh, 
investir pour pouvoir justement investir dans euh, ces capacités de production et nous suivons en effet euh, les, euh, les, les productions ou la, les investissements qui ont, été, qui ont été faits. Un des résultats de ces investissements, c'est justement la capacité de la société de produire les, euh, les vaccins tels qu'ils sont prévus dans le nombre et les quantités prévues dans les contrats. Donc ça, c'est une chose. Euh, en ce qui concerne la, les négociations, euh, oui, hier nous avons eu des, des réunions avec AstraZeneca. Vous, vous avez entendu la réaction de la commissaire euh, hier, euh, exprimée dans son statement devant la presse et dans des, des tweets, exprimant la dissatisfaction, soulignant l'importance d'avoir des schémas, des calendriers de livraison spécifiques et précis pour tout le monde. C'est vers cela que nous travaillons. Euh, la, la Commission a bien euh, exprimé, je pense, ainsi que les États membres, leurs attentes et nous attendons maintenant de la société d'aller dans cette direction. Merci. Merci. Euh, je... Oui, sur ta deuxième question, ce qui concerne pourquoi est-ce que euh, l'entreprise nous donnerait des réponses euh, 48 heures euh, après la réunion précédente. Euh, comme dans tout processus euh, complexe, euh, le, le fait de se donner un peu de temps pour euh, revoir, pour rediscuter, etc., aide le processus. Euh, si, sinon, on n'aurait pas parfois plusieurs conseillers européens qui se réunissent euh, pour arriver à une solution sur un, sur un sujet nous avons euh, reposé un certain nombre de questions à AstraZeneca et nous espérons que nous obtiendrons des réponses lors de notre, lors, lors de notre prochain euh, rendez-vous avec eux euh, demain. Donc. Tommaso Galavotti. Tommaso. Yes, thank you for the floor, Tommaso Galavotti, in Kronos, Italy. Just a quick question, if I may. The first one is on AstraZeneca, because if I understand correctly, the issue is that AstraZeneca is delivering the quantities of vaccine which were promised for the first quarter to the UK and not to the EU. Are you trying to get a, a balance? I mean, uh, if uh, there are production issues, it's unfair that the e, just the EU uh, uh, bears the burden of this. And The second one is always on AstraZeneca. Uh, I wonder what kind of means of pressure do you have on AstraZeneca? Be because the commissioner Kyriakides yesterday was very tough in, his, uh, in her declarations, but actually the share price in London is going up. So the, the effect was not very heavy. I wonder what kind of pressure can you apply on the company? Thank you. Tommaso, let me, um, let me dispel a misunderstanding here right from the outset. Our um, dialogue with AstraZeneca has nothing to do with uh, uh, trying to put the company under pressure on financial markets. Uh, this is uh, really something that is absolutely not of our concern. Our concern is the health of EU citizens And it is the fact that um, we need uh, hundreds of millions of doses of vaccines from a whole series of uh, manufacturers in order to deliver on this. Um, and so what we are doing is that we are having frank and very regular discussions with AstraZeneca in order to make sure that the information we have at, the, at our disposal um, is clear, complete, and allows us to find a way forward in order to get those doses. And trust me, we will not let go until we are in that position. Um, that is on um, your second question. On your first question, I pass the floor to Stéphane. Stéphane, please yes. don't give Hello, up on sorry. me. Please don't give up on me. <laughs> Um, I'm not in, in, in entirely clear. I understand um, the purpose of, of the first question. You referred to deliveries um, uh, to uh, uh, not to the EU but to other uh, to the UK. quantities to, UK. To, to, to the UK. That if there are production issues, that it would, would not be fair for the European Union to bear the burden. Well, uh, 
I think um, the Commission has ex expressed, not just the Commission, also the, the, the Member States have expressed their clear dissatisfaction with the announcements which had been made by AstraZeneca, which were about a very serious shortfall of production. This is not good. It's clear. And this is why the strong message has been passed by the Commission, why we have these uh, discussions, because we want that, indeed, deliveries that have been fixed in the contract take place in a timely manner so that we can serve the European, uh, European citizens. Secondly, in, as, as also said before, what helps here, what helps here, is to make sure that we have better transparency about what happened with the doses. Have they been delivered? Where have they been delivered? And this is one of the reasons why the Commission called for the um, establishment of this transparency register, which will help to create much more transparency here in the interest of the Commission and Member States, in the interest of the European citizens who are entitled to receive the doses that have been agreed upon in the agreement. Thank you. And again, let me stress, I mean, the Commission uh, has from the outset said that um, we want vaccines to be available um, not only in the EU, but in the rest of the world. So this is not us saying, you know, that uh, somebody should not be getting vaccines and that we should be getting vaccines, that uh, people in one country should not be getting vaccines and we should be getting vaccines. It's about making sure that the companies uh, with which we have signed advanced purchasing agreements are delivering on their commitment they have made to us, as well as on the commitments that they have made to other countries. We don't contest that everybody, of course, needs vaccines. That's absolutely clear. But what is absolutely certain as well is that the European Union has invested these amounts of money in these companies in order to make sure that it is in a position to receive the doses that it considers necessary for its vaccination campaigns. And not at any given point in time, but uh, as soon as possible after the conditional marketing authorization has been delivered. And this is what we are, uh, what we are working on. Well, and if we see, of course, that a company is delivering vaccines, well, we are perfectly entitled to ask why it is that suddenly it is told to us that we cannot get the quantities of vaccines that we have ordered. This is what the debate is about, and this is what the, commission, the president means when he says Europe means business. Okay, we will take one last question, I'm sorry, but then we will have to move, o we will have to move on sorry, to the press conference. David. Carita. David. Oui, merci Eric. Euh, je vais essayer d'allumer ma, ma, ma caméra. Euh, deux questions, si, si je peux. Est-ce que sur, euh, vu que on, on, la, la commissaire a très, très clairement parlé de early notification pour euh, exportation, je voulais savoir si sur la base d'une notification préventive pour des raisons sanitaires, les États membres peuvent... Euh, 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 bloquer les exportations, comme ça a été le cas au mois de mars, même à l'intérieur du, euh, du, du, du marché interne unique. Deuxième question, le Invitalia, qui est une agence euh, du gouvernement italien, a annoncé un investissement de 81 millions d'euros en Reitera pour un vaccin national italien. Euh, le commissaire au vaccin en Italie est le dirigeant de Invitalia, donc il y a, comment dire, peut-être un petit conflit d'intérêts. Mais bon, je voulais savoir, euh, est-ce que l'hypothèse euh, euh, d'un vaccin, euh, est-ce que Reiter a été discuté dans le steering group et est-ce qu'il y a d'autres pays européens qui sont intéressés à ce vaccin italien Merci. Sur la première question, je vais passer la parole à Stéphane, mais euh, je crois qu'il faut séparer deux choses. C'est euh, un mécanisme de transparence euh, préalable, euh, comme je l'ai dit moi-même, euh, d'une part, et d'autre part, euh, la législation européenne en ce qui concerne euh, les, euh, les urgences euh, dans le domaine de la santé et les prérogatives des États membres dans ce domaine. Donc avec ce cadrage, je passe la parole à Stéphane. Merci beaucoup, Eric et David. Oui, Eric, tu, tu as raison. Euh, C'est un système de transparence, de monitoring, de, de, de montrer quelles sont les intentions d'export euh, de, de euh, des vaccins. Donc, ce n'est pas le mécanisme qui a été, qui a été proposé, n'est pas un mécanisme d'un export ban ou blocage. C'est le système, le but du système, c'est de faire un monitoring et de vérifier euh, 
euh, d'avoir une meilleure idée des intentions d'exportation des produits euh, qui ont été, dont la production a été financée dans une grande mesure par les investissements de la Commission européenne. En ce qui concerne, réitère le, le vaccin que tu mentionnes, euh, tu sais que nous avons eu beaucoup de, de candidats euh, pour conclure un contrat avec beaucoup de, de, de sociétés. Nous avons euh, développé un portefeuille à ce stade-ci de six contrats avec six développeurs. Nous sommes encore en, en discussion avec euh, deux autres sociétés, euh, comme tu le sais, euh, mais nous ne, nous ne communiquons pas sur les, tous les noms des sociétés avec qui on aurait pu ou on n'aurait pas pu avoir euh, des négociations. Ce qui, compte, ce qui compte dans la sélection de ces, de ces sociétés, ce sont les critères de sélection tels qu'ils ont été établis clairement je pense, dans la stratégie de, va de, de vaccin. Est-ce que le, le développeur a une capacité de production euh, dans l'Union européenne Quel, Quels sont les budgets nécessaires pour euh, investir dans le développement de ce vaccin Quel serait le prix du vaccin Quid des, des règles de, de, de responsabilité, etc. Ce sont ces critères qui ont amené euh, le, le steering board et le negotiation team d'entamer ou pas des négociations avec euh, des des, des sociétés de développeurs de, de vaccins. Merci. Merci beaucoup Stéphane. Ceci nous amène à la fin de notre midday briefing. Je regarde mes collègues euh, qui sont assis et qui nous écoutent depuis une heure et euh, ils sont bien entendu à votre disposition euh, sur tous les autres sujets d'actualité euh, européenne qui peuvent vous intéresser. Donc n'hésitez pas à les contacter en bilatéral sur euh, ces sujets. Euh, je ne voudrais pas qu'ils pensent qu'ils euh, n'ont pas de travail à faire. Euh, voilà, maintenant, nous arrêtons ceci et nous passons à la conférence de presse. Il y en a une qui va travailler maintenant, certainement, c'est Ariane. Merci. Et, ah non, pardon, c'est d'abord Myriam. Pardon, pardon. Et ensuite, Ariane. Merci beaucoup.